Hey guys, this is Josh, the Natty know all and I've got five tips for high school athletes who are starting the recruiting process on things that you need to do before you commit to a school. Hey guys, it's Josh, the Natty know all and once again, I've got five tips for you if you are an athlete starting the recruiting process, or even if you're already in the recruiting process, these are things that I think will help you out. Now, this is not the complete list of everything you should do, but these are five things that really have stood out to me the last few years as I've worked with colleges and seen the athletes in the recruiting process. Now, I actually have some experience in this. One, I was a college athlete. I actually did golf in college at a school in Missouri, but even more so, I've worked in admissions at a university. I did that for a number of years. My wife also works in college admissions at both a university and now she currently works at a community college. So I have experience in this field knowing things that young athletes and students just in general need to do and take care of. So the first tip I have for you is research. You need to research the schools that you are looking at going to and make sure they have a major that is what you want. If you go to a school, let's say you're looking for a specific type of engineering and you go to a school that doesn't even have engineering, you're in trouble. That is going to be a school that doesn't fit your needs. So make sure that they have the major you want. If you're undecided, at least make sure that the majors they offer are something that might interest you. So you're not going to a school hoping that you get excited about something. Have some plan, some focus for the future. That does help and it does make a big difference. Also check the location of the schools. Some schools are located in big cities, obviously. Some are located kind of out in La La Land. If you are a big city person, it may not be the best fit to go to that school that's off in the woods in a small town of, of 10,000. But at the same time, if you prefer to be in a smaller city, in a smaller town, not the big nightlife type thing, those smaller schools might be better for you and not the big ones in the middle, middle of a big city. So do your research, make sure the school is a good fit for you. Also research the coaches and the program. Make sure that you know the coaches you are going to be playing for fit you and your personality. Be aware, there are coaches that show their personality even on social media. They may be, you know, they may cuss a lot on social media. They may go out there and, and bash their own players. If you're not comfortable with that, then you need to be aware that that is how that coach is and steer away from them. Do research on their recruiting classes. See how many kids they've recruited the last couple years, where they've recruited them from, why they're recruiting them. If you are a catcher and you saw that last year they recruited 10 catchers, that may not be the spot for you to go because that's too many, you're not gonna get a chance to play a whole lot. So be aware of the recruiting classes. Also to be aware is the recruiting rules and the dates. Make sure that you know what things coaches can and cannot do and also when they can do certain things. There are times where coaches cannot contact you. So they're not trying to avoid you, not trying to do different things. <coughs> it just, there's times where they can't do certain things. They have certain rules, certain guidelines. Some of them make sense. Some of those rules don't make sense, but they're still there. So protect yourself and your eligibility by making sure that you are in the right. Make sure you are doing things by the book. Just protect yourself. That's a big thing. Second tip I have for you is fill out your financial aid forms as soon as you can and any applications to the schools that you need to fill out. Now, most people don't realize, but in, in October of your senior year, you can actually start filling out financial aid for college the next year. This is something that is very important because financial aid is a lot of times first come, first serve at a lot of schools. They may have certain scholarships or grants that they will give their students on a first come, first serve basis. And if you don't fill out the financial aid until June, July, or August before college starts, it might be too late to get a lot of those things. Odds are you're not gonna get a full ride scholarship for a sport because most sports have a limited number of scholarships they can give out, and many of those get cut in half or to 25%, so that way more guys or, or girls, whether it's softball or whatever sport, 
can receive a scholarship and help out with their, their tuition and fees. So get the financial aid stuff done right away as soon as you can. As an athlete, this is something that you actually need to have your parents help you out on because they actually had to fill out a certain amount of the information themselves. So this is one where you actually work together with them. Uh, if you can't fill it all out, talk with the colleges. They do have individuals who work in financial aid who are able to help students, especially prospective students, preparing with their financial aid. Once again, do the applications, know the dates, know the timelines, know the deadlines. It's important to get that stuff taken care of. Third tip for you is understand the different levels that there are of college and the athletics. All schools can give you a great education, but each school is different in the level of competition that they play at. Now, let me just say this right off the bat. If you're one of those people who says, I'm gonna play division one or nothing at all, I'm gonna call you a fool because there is amazing talent at every level of college sports. But please understand this, there are over 1,600 colleges that offer baseball at their, at their college or university, over 1,600 programs. Less than 20% of those are Division I. Less than 20% of all college schools that college and universities that have baseball programs are D1. All the rest are D2, D3, NAIA, and junior colleges. Those are all great schools to look into. Don't overlook an offer just because it doesn't have D1 next to it. The best school for you might not be a Division I school. And I'm not talking about athletically. Athletically, you might be able to compete at D1, but a D2 or an NAIA might be a better fit for you education-wise because it has the degrees that you're looking for. When you graduate from college and you start applying for jobs, no one's going to ask you if the school you went to was D1, D2, or NAIA. I know, I used to do hiring for my last job, and I didn't care what level their college was athletically, I just cared they had the degree. So, be aware, there are different levels. Each level has competitive play. If you play baseball and you wanna play professional baseball, know that athletes get drafted from every level every year. Playing JUCO does not mean you won't get drafted, doesn't mean you won't get noticed, in fact, it gives you a better chance to play Division I later on because you've competed against better athletes already and you're going to move into that, that next stage a lot easier. Colleges like transfers because those guys have already proven they can do the grind. So tip number four I have for you is don't feel forced to verbally commit to a college. If you are a eighth grader, a freshman, a sophomore, don't feel like you have to verbally commit or you're going to lose out your chance to play college baseball. You have to understand. It doesn't matter if you verbally commit to a school. A school doesn't have to honor anything they've offered to you until you've signed the paperwork that they give you when you're a senior uh, once the, the National Letter of, of Intent Day comes. That's when it really matters. That's when it happens. Also be aware. There are rules that allow for schools to take away your scholarship each year. You can lose your scholarship if you go to a big school and you don't match up with what they want in the very first year. They can actually take your scholarship away. Hopefully, there's a lot of colleges that don't do that. They try and work with the players and try and really build them up. But there are a lot of coaches who, if you're not right for the program after one year, they'll literally kick you to the curb. So be aware. That's why one of the reasons why I love when guys go to junior colleges because they can hone their skill, really build their, you know, their, their understanding of the game and then go on to a Division I school or NAIA or Division II, that type of stuff. Take the time to find the best route for you. Don't feel forced. Now, there's a lot of coaches that if they offer you something, they're going to honor their word. You know? And if something does happen, you get hurt or have a really bad season, they may talk with you that, hey, we've got to make some changes. We still want to offer you or, you know, they'll talk with you. They'll be honest with you. But there are some coaches, a lot of coaches who wouldn't do that. They just don't even honor your, their stuff that they've told you. They're just saying it to get you to commit to them verbally so no one else tries to steal you away. And when the time comes and they don't want you, they just cut you loose. So I know that's pretty negative, pretty hard. It does happen, though. There are a lot of great coaches who don't do that. 
Their number one focus is to develop, you know, young athletes into adults who are respectful and motivated to be successful. But there are some bad coaches out there. There just are. Okay, tip number five I have for you. And this one is more of an etiquette thing and a little bit of a pet peeve. Don't mention every offer you get. That can actually hurt you recruiting wise. If a D1 school offers you a small scholarship and maybe you don't really plan on going there because they didn't offer you enough, but you go on the social media and say, hey, University XYZ just offered me this and I'm so honored to be offered that. There are gonna be other schools, D2, NAIA, even junior colleges that might say, oh, well, if he's already got that, I'm gonna focus my attention elsewhere and not recruit him because you know, obviously he's very excited about that offer and that's where he's gonna go. That does happen. Coaches will be turned off by, from recruiting you if you start mentioning every offer you get. And there are times where coaches don't want you to say that. They want, they want that offer to you to be something that is kind of a, a personal thing. It's a relationship between you and them. Now, when you accept an offer and you know, you're gonna sign to go play there, heck yeah, spread it everywhere. Stand on the mountaintop and yell it out that you signed with that school and you're playing for them. That's, that's awesome. But don't mention every single offer you get. In fact, I would say, really don't talk about any offers you get until you've accepted and chosen one. So, you know, that, that's important. It, it's, it is something that is a pet peeve of mine, but it also can affect your recruiting. It can affect whether or not schools want to continue recruiting you if you keep saying, oh, well, this big school offered me something and this big school offered me something. Even though you may not want to go to those schools, other schools might be turned off. So guys, those are just five tips I have for you. There's a lot more out there. Do your research, find other things so that way you guys understand. But those are the five ones that I know of, five ones that I think get overlooked sometimes way too often by athletes. So I'm hoping that this helps out. I'm hoping that this kind of gives you guys an idea of you know, things you can start doing, things you can start looking at. So guys, I'm Josh, the 90 Know-It-All, coming to you with five tips to help you out as you start the recruiting process. Have a good day.